Good morning. Starting this video, I'll do a series of eight videos which will deal with eight lessons that I have culled from the ongoing Ukraine war, which has entered the second year. Now the format will be one lesson, one video, two videos in a week, so that in a month's time, I'm able to wrap up all the eight lessons, dive deep and put things in a perspective. That is what I intend to do. Now the list of the eight lessons can be seen on the screen. I believe the first two lessons are absolutely very important. They are universal, which means that they are applicable to all nations, all wars, all time. And these two are the need for political determination or political will and the military competence. Because these two together constitute what is called a nation's deterrence. Which means that if the deterrence fails, once again these two things will be at the forefront to ensure that the nation comes out honorably in case of a war. So this is the importance of political determination. So when we talk of political will, it means that whether the nation is small, it is big, major power, small power, it is the right, it is the duty of the government to ensure that the territorial integrity of the nation is maintained. And all nations do it, they take pride in it, that no part of their territory should be taken away by an enemy, by an adversary, and nobody should be sitting on their territory. This is what political determination is all about. Now, let's see political determination first in our own context, in the context of India. Interestingly, after the 1971 war, one major mobilization of the army, which is Operation Parakram, it happened under the Bajpayee government, a BJP government. Once again, under the BJP government, there has been a major rebalancing of forces against the Chinese, against the PLA in Ladakh and in Arunachal Pradesh. So what I intend doing is, I will go over very briefly, I will assess and review Operation Parakram and see how the BJP government fared then insofar as political determination is concerned. And what lessons were learnt or not learnt by the Modi government, which again went in for a major army and air force rebalancing. Now, when we talk of Operation Parakram, the first thing to know is that it happened against the backdrop of 9-11. 9-11 had happened, the world was shocked, the Americans were shocked and Within days of 9-11, President Bush announced that either to the world, he said either you are with us or you are with terrorists. In other words, either you join the global war on terror led by America, which was called Operation Enduring Freedom, or if you don't join that, we will assume that you are with the terrorist. Now, President Musharraf, who was also the Chief of Army Staff of Pakistan, he joined Operation enduring freedom and so did the Bajpai government. In fact, there was a thinking at that time in the Bajpai government that because now America has been hit, they will understand what a terrorist attack is all about and hence they will be more considerate, they will be more inclined and supportive of the proxy war that the Bajpai government had been telling the Americans is going on from Pakistan. This was the thinking at that time, that they will be supportive of us. So, against this backdrop, on 1st of October 2001, Jammu and Kashmir assembly was attacked by the terrorist. Prime Minister Bajpai gave a call, a statement in Delhi, that a similar thing, a terrorist attack, will not be acceptable and very strict measures will be taken without explaining, of course, what will be done. 
then again on the 13th of december 2001 now the terrorist attacked the indian parliament when it was in session fortunately the prime minister and the leader of the opposition they were not in the house this was a big thing a big shock for india and the world that the parliament had been attacked the next day on 14th of december 2001 the delhi police confirmed that terrorists from lashkar and jaish were behind the attack on the parliament on 15th december the next day why i am giving you all these timelines is because i wrote a book operation parakram perhaps this is the only book that i co-authored i wrote with uh, the former vice chief of army staff general vk sooth and lot of details we got to know primarily because of uh, general sooth but that besides on the 15th of december india gave a list of these terrorists belonging to jaish al lashkar to the pakistan high commissioner in delhi asking him that they should be apprehended arrested in pakistan within hours president musharraf rejected the indian demand now india was left with no option but to call for a ccs which is the cabinet committee on security meet which was held under bajpai prime minister on 17th of december 2001 now here after listening to all the people where the three chiefs were also present it was finally concluded and the prime minister didn't speak much in fact i am told he didn't speak at all he was only in the listening mode all the talking was done by his national security adviser brijesh mishra so at the end of it brijesh mishra told the army chief who was also the chairman chief of staff committee general padmanabhan ki aap army ko mobilize kariye mobilize the army i understand the army chief asked that what are we mobilizing for what are the objectives so he was again told wo baad mein batayenge they will be told later so these instructions were given to the chairman chiefs of staff committee now there were two peculiarities here first of all no war between india and pakistan has ever been an announced war now here was the bajpai government actually announcing that we intend to mobilize and the army understood that the mobilization is for war this is takes me to the second point neither did the army chief really press to know what exactly are those political objectives that needs to be achieved by the military means what is it that was not happening through peaceful means and nor was it told the reason behind the mobilization by the government whether it is going to hostilities it is going to war or it is coercion containment what is it about it was never told mobilization was ordered and on 18th december 2001 orders were issued in the army to mobilize the whole army huge army lambersam army the work started it took 3 weeks now in hindsight i know because the pakistan army has advantage of the interior lines of communication they could accomplish their mobilization in about 7 to 10 days time so they were ready while this mobilization was going on something very peculiar happened in that josh what we call in that energy which was there of mobilization of mobilization and going to war two core two core is indian army's heaviest core it has lot of armored and mechanized elements in it it is the heaviest and the biggest core it has a very specific operational task so it was found the americans reported their satellite saw that the two core elements had actually crossed the defensive line also mobilization was one that you get into your defenses and the other was perhaps some reconnaissance elements of two core they had crossed and they had gone the other side this was reported by the americans it came in washington post and lo and behold in less than 24 hours the core commander lieutenant general kapil vij he was replaced let me say he was sacked now when you sack a core commander of the most important core which has a very delicate task 
as far as the command is concerned and the army is concerned the morale is down to the boots period and as far as they are concerned they are confused that are we preparing for war what the hell is going on so this was the state of the indian army then now nothing happened mobilization continued and general musharraf general musharraf simply did not give in to any of the demands being made by india now in may may to be specific 14th of may 2002 kaluchak massacre happened kaluchak is in jammu terrorist attacked an air force base and they killed they massacred the their families their women and their children this was a big thing the prime minister had no choice but to again announce something but in his own dramatic way that he used to speak he said aar paar ki ladai hogi it will be a war to the finish that is the translation of that what he said now as far as the americans and all the the foreign missions were concerned well they said all right if the prime minister is saying that perhaps they are headed for a nuclear war a nuclear escalation is very much on the cards it's possible so the advisories were issued in all the foreign mission important missions told their staff to please pack up their bags and in 24 48 hours leave the country and that is what they started doing now after the prime minister had said this there was panic in delhi that he has perhaps said too much what to do now how to rein in the war lobby because war was never the intention of the bajpai government so here we have condolisa rice who was the national security advisor to president bush she writes in a book no higher honor where she quotes here it is i read i received an urgent call from brijesh mishra the nsa and was pulled from the president's meeting mishra said i cannot contain the war lobby here without some help now here was america asking for help uh, here was uh, india asking for help from america to not so that the war does not escalate after the prime minister had sounded the bugle for war escalation and she further says that musharraf continued to make the situation worse after saying that pakistan would respond with full might if provoked by india he announced that he could bolster the troops in kashmir by moving some some from the afghan border so as far as musharraf was concerned he was belligerent he was unyielding this is the time when bajpayee said this a war to the finish he started firing ballistic missiles indicating very clearly that he will give tit for tat he was ready he was prepared the point here that i am making is that for some reason the bjp governments they always have believed that if we are be cozy with the americans beyond the national interest of india it will help us this is my assessment and i know i am correct so what the bajpai government was doing is taking advantage of the global war on terror telling the americans that now things have escalated please rein in musharraf that is what they were trying to do and musharraf was not relenting finally things were calmed down president bush spoke with musharraf colin paul the secretary of state traveled to the region but finally it was that this was over everybody knew now it's a matter of time that demobilization has to happen so on the indian side they got the chairman of the national security advisory board general uh, vp malik he on 16th of october in hyderabad house he said to a gathering he said that because all the objectives of operation parakram have been achieved what had been achieved was not explained by him so he said now there is a need no further mobilization is required there is a need for strategic relocation in other words now you withdraw and go back to your positions that was the end of operation parakram 
10 months long mobilization where the defense minister said in parliament close to 1000 crore rupees were spent. I am talking of 2002. 300 crore was given as compensation to the farmers. Lot of lives were lost. The official figure put was 230. The unofficial which was put by many analysts was close to 1000. And India's conventional capabilities, they were totally blunted by this operation Parakram for the simple reason that Musharraf had called off Bajpayee's bluff of this mobilization. There was enormous wear and tear of the equipment over 10 months. And this is the reason when there are some people who say that subsequently in 2008 when 26-11 happened under Manmohan Singh, why did India not retaliate? Because there was no equipment, the wear and tear was so colossal that it needed a lot of time to get things in order. This was one of the main reasons why the uh, why the Manmohan Singh government did not react. Now, after demobilization, after the withdrawal happened, what did the Bajpayee government do? Bajpayee government, instead of building up their capabilities, learning the lesson from Operation Parakram, their army chief, why I'm saying there is, because General N.C. Vej, who took over as the army chief from Padmanabhan, he later became the director general of the BJP run think tank Vivekanand Institute, where he took over the director general post from the founder general, director general, uh, who is now the national security advisor Ajit Doval. Now, what which did was in 2004, while the Bajpai government was still there, he did Operation Diwar, which basically means putting a fence. Putting a fence on a live border is unthinkable, a live military border. You put a fence on Naka, you don't put it on a live border. With the result, that created a Maginot line. It created a defensive mindset in the officers and the troops. That means you were only to do the counter-terror operation inside your territory in the hinterland. And with this, the proxy war increased. Because at the end of uh, Parakram, we saw that there were there was more counter-terror operations, more reports coming of the terrorists uh, from crossing the border, coming from Pakistan. All this was going on. So, what I'll do now is, I have four takeaways from this Parakram, Operation Parakram. And I will compare those four takeaways with what the President Modi government has done by during their rebalancing with a much powerful foe, fo China, than Pakistan ever can be. So the first takeaway, we saw there lack of political determination. Bajpai government lacked that. What happened here in this case? After 15th of June 2020, after the Galwan killings, four things happened. Number one, four days later, 19th of June 2020, Prime Minister himself said at the all party meeting, nobody has come in a territory, nobody is occupying a territory, giving two clear signals to China. Number one, that the Prime Minister of India had accepted their 1959 claim line, period. And because of that, because the political determination was not shown, further negotiations between the two sides obviously will happen on Chinese terms. And that is precisely what happened when the joint statement was signed in Moscow by the two foreign ministers of India and China on 10th of September uh, 2020, heavily in favor of China. Now, not only that, I spoke about the instance of uh, General Kapil Vij, how he was sacked. What happened here? Here a similar thing happened. On the night of 29th, 29th 30th August 2020, in a very daring, daring tactical act maneuver, the Indian Army went and occupied at night the heights of Kailash Range in South Pangongso which overlooked the garrison of the PLA. PLA was absolutely furious. And within two months, in less than two months, while everybody argued 
that this can be the card what the army has accomplished at the cost of losing two of their brave soldiers this is a card which will help us in our negotiations with china the government told the army to withdraw to come back from the heights because the government did not want the chinese to be angry about this or stay displeased about it now then again just to assuage the chinese on the 7th february 2021 general v k singh former army chief who is now a minister in the modi government he made a astounding statement in chennai shocking the nation he said that in all these years it is the indian army and not the pla indian army has done 10 times more aggressions than the pla has done and obviously the chinese were pleased with this and recently we had the external affairs minister jay shankar saying to a television channel that you don't pick up a fight with an adversary who is economically bigger well there are so many cases you there is vietnam there so many of them you name it it has nothing to do with bigger it is to do with the honor of your country you fight for that simple now so this is about political determination now let's see the second point second point is we saw that there was in parakram there was lack of consultation between the political and the military leadership the political leadership never spelt very clearly what was the political objective of war the army ch- army chief or the chairman chief of staff committee was not clear about what he is supposed to do was it coercion what was it about now what has happened with the modi government now instead of consultation the army and the air force they have been used not for the national objectives but the bjp party objectives this is called politicization of the armed forces they were used in 2016 so called surgical strikes against pakistan and they were used in the 2019 balakot attacks which helped the ruling party in the elections for electoral gains and of course a lot of details on this i have written in my book the last war there is a full chapter on this the politicization of the army that was the second thing third thing in parakram the conventional capabilities were totally blunted as i said after that operation diwar was done and instead of there was a passage of time perhaps the adversary would have thought that india made up some of their shortfalls in conventional capabilities the modi government did these two operations the surgical strike 2016 and 2019 so what was there left of the army and the air force it was exposed and this was the reason that the key reason why the pla was absolutely clear in their mind that there will be no retaliation from india and they did that may 2020 operation when they just came and sat on our territory and the last thing is just like that too much of reliance on america on american support now once again india has gone and signed all the four foundation agreements modi government has done and now the indian military is part of the defense network of the indo pacific command and the enemy now this time is not pakistan it is china and china is a adversary where xi jinping has made it clear on repeated occasions the general secretary that all the territories that belong to us they will be reclaimed and at the end of the 20th 20th congress in december 2022 he gave a call that by 2027 which is round the corner which happens to be the 100 years of the pla the centenary the pla should be ready to take on the question of taiwan south china sea and the border tension between india and uh, between india and uh, uh, china in other words what he was saying is that by 2027 the pla should be ready to take on the us military in so far as the western pacific is concerned and should be able to demolish and reclaim the territory 
in the indian ocean region demolish who the indian army for against whom they are preparing they have been preparing for the last two and a half years so the point i am making is political determination is the key issue which i have explained in details our political determination has gone down it has not strengthened the political will to fight and now in my next video i'll talk of military competence thank you